find the Thevenin equivalent with respect to terminals A and B. I already have a video explaining the concept behind the Thevenin equivalent circuit, and another video going through a simple example where a series of source transformations made us arrive at the Thevenin equivalent of a certain circuit. But in this case, we'll solve it the classical way. To find the Thevenin equivalent, we have to find two quantities, the Thevenin voltage and then the Thevenin resistance. To find the Thevenin voltage, we need to find this open circuit voltage between terminals A and B. To do this, we'll have to use any circuit analysis technique, like uh, superposition, nodal analysis, mesh analysis, whatever. In this case, I think nodal analysis would be a, a good idea. We can start by labeling the reference node, which is ground, and then we'll call this node 1, this node 2, and this node 3. And we can immediately note that the open circuit voltage we're trying to find is precisely the voltage at node 3, because there is no voltage drop between node 3 and node A, so they're pretty much the same, and the negative node, B, is connected to ground. So VOC is precisely V3. With that in mind, let's use the node voltage method, which I already have a couple of videos on, to find V3, and doing so, we would have the open circuit voltage, which will give us the Thevenin voltage. Okay. Let's start with node 1. We'll write KCL equations, and this is what we do every time we use the nodal analysis technique. But wait, node 1 is actually extremely simple. The voltage at node 1 is just 72 volts, because there is only this voltage source between node 1 and ground. So no KCL equations are needed. That's it. Node 1, V1 equals 72 volts. And we move on to node 2. Okay, let's assign current directions. Based on the polarity of the voltage source, it seems reasonable to assume that we have this current entering node 2, this current leaving node 2, heading towards node 3, and this current leaving node 2, heading towards ground. So, the current entering is given by V1 minus V2 all over 5, the current leaving heading towards ground is given by V2 over 20, and the other current leaving heading towards node 3 is V2 minus V3 all over 8. Let's clear the denominators by multiplying both sides by the least common multiple of the denominators, which is 40. This gives us the following equation. And now we can add like terms, arriving at this final form for the equation at node 2. 8v1 minus 15v2 plus 5v3 equals 0. And now for node 3, well, we have this same current that was leaving node 2 and entering node 3, which is V2 minus V3 over 8. But then we have this other current entering node 3, which is given by V1 minus V3 over 12. But note that there is no current leaving V3, because we have an open circuit, so there's no complete path for the current to flow. So the sum of these two currents entering node 3 must be 0, since there is no current leaving. Again, let's multiply by the least common multiple, which is 24 in this case, to clear the denominators. Simplifying and combining like terms, we end up with 2v1 plus 3v2 minus 5v3 equals 0. So we now have a system of equations, three equations, three unknowns. Technically, we have two unknowns because V1 is explicitly spelled out to be 72 volts. So solving the two equations from node 2 and node 3, we get the values for V2 and V3. Now we're only interested in V3, remember, because this is the open circuit voltage. V3 works out to be 64.8 volts, so this is the open circuit voltage and the Thevenin voltage that we're aiming to get. Okay, so done. V Thevenin is 64.8 volts. The second step in finding the Thevenin equivalent is finding the equivalent resistance, or the Thevenin resistance. The classical way is to short terminals A and B, and then find this short circuit current. 
Then you would find the Thevenin resistance by dividing the Thevenin voltage by the short circuit current. So dividing 64.8 by this I short circuit. But the problem with this classical method is that you would have to repeat the analysis. The node voltage we used earlier does not hold anymore because the circuit behavior changed. We don't have an open circuit anymore between A and B. We now have a short circuit. So there is a path for the current to flow. So if you were to use the same node voltage method, the equation at node 3 will change and it'll be a little bit more complicated. So I would suggest using the mesh current method to find I short circuit. But there is an even easier method, especially because we don't have any dependent sources. And this method would be to find the equivalent resistance looking into terminals A and B. So R, A, B. In doing so, we treat every voltage source as a short circuit and every current source as an open circuit. We only have a single source, which is a voltage source, so we can short it, and this will be the modified circuit. Now, I already have a bunch of videos on calculating the equivalent resistance between two terminals, so I'm hoping you're an expert at this by now. I'm going to do everything in one line. We have 5 parallel with 20, plus 8, all parallel with 12. If you're having trouble understanding this um, equivalent resistance calculation, I'm hoping someone would help you out in the comments because I'd like to think that we now have a community of equivalent resistance experts, if you will. The result of this will be 6 ohms, and that completes our calculation. The Thevenin resistance is 6 ohms. The Thevenin voltage, as we said earlier, is 64.8 volts, and this gives us the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit we started with with respect to terminals A and B.